and let him get started. Claudio, if you want to go ahead and hit the record button. Okay. Done. All right, it's all yours. Thank you, Aaron. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for attending to my session. Uh, first of all, I want uh, to give a special thanks to these guys behind the virtual chapter. Chrissy, Aaron Nelson, Robswell, and Lyre Jr. They are making an outstanding job to, for the community. When this session ends, I hope uh, that everyone will be able to start writing some PowerShell scripts that helps on your daily tasks. Uh, for those that uh, already write scripts, I hope that I can show something you don't know yet. Uh, well, first, my name is Claudio Silva, and I work uh, as a SQL Server DBA on a large Portuguese tel. I started with SQL Server 2000 as developer. I'm also a PowerShell enthusiast, and uh, I love to automate tasks in order to save time and that checks. I'm a major contributor on two open, op open source projects, the DBA tools managed by Chrissy and the DBA reports uh, managed by Rob. I'm also a member and regular speaker at uh, SQL Port um, Portuguese community and, and user group and uh, also on the SQL Saturday in Portugal. The next one will be on October 1, October 1st. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, by email or also on Slack. So let's see our agenda for today. First, um, we, we, as we are here to, to solve uh, problems, um, we must find uh, our needs. And our needs uh, to this session will be to repair our uh, SQL server users, uh, uh, which are orphan, okay? Uh, next, I'm going to share um, uh, why I think you should learn PowerShell, okay? I will share um, my and my uh, ideas on uh, the, the um, on my scripting development guides, okay? We, we will see uh, what is uh, the common lets and pipeline and we will see two demos, okay? One solving uh, an SQL Server task, and if you are not a, a SQL DBA, I have another one on file system. At the end, I will uh, give some uh, resource and some final thoughts uh, regarding the, this session. Okay, so first, uh, find the needs. Uh, what kind of, of tasks uh, are most are more likely to be automated? Uh, repetitive ones, for example. Okay, if you if you find uh, some of these examples, um, you need to find specific logins or users on instance with dozens of uh, database. Um, uh, you do database refresh um, and need to to make post refresh actions, um, instance installations, and so on. But okay, uh, I have tasks to, to be. Uh, I have done uh, manually. I want to automate them, but uh, it really works. Okay, how much time it will take to create uh, uh, this, the PowerShell script, uh, and how many times I will use it? Okay, um, I have here um, a practical example. If you have a, a task that takes uh, five minutes of your uh, of your time, and you you need to execute it uh, three times a week. Um, next, if you PowerShell it, and now uh, it takes 30 seconds to execute, in one year you will uh, save about 10 hours. It's more than a, a regular way, uh, day of work, okay, for a single task, maybe for a single instance, okay. Okay, so why why PowerShell? Uh, some days ago, I, I saw uh, this um, this uh, uh, quote from uh, Trevor Sullivan, um, and I think most people think PowerShell is a more one more programming language. Okay, uh, and this is a, an error view. Okay, recently uh, the, uh, when I read this quote, uh, I, I thought, okay, I will share with the, all the attendees. And if we think the PowerShell is a task-oriented framework. 
uh, maybe this will make more sense uh, instead of thinking just a programming language, okay? Uh, I really subscribe uh, what this guy says, okay? Next, uh, this can make your life easier, yeah? okay? Uh, the first reason, uh, it will save time. Uh, and is less error prone, okay, compared with uh, manual tasks. The next one, new job opportunities. Um, the, the job, new job opportunities become more and more present uh, on any job description, like a need to automate tasks and job interviews like uh, how do you query service status, connect to database using PowerShell, and so on. Next. Uh, today we can say come to stay. Microsoft is a Microsoft standard uh, for automation, and sometimes this is the more important. I think um, there is another way to accomplish the tasks. You can talk with guys who work with Azure, uh, SharePoint, Office 365. Um, some tasks don't have any GUI to to configure. You need to do uh, by um, calling commandlets in PowerShell. Okay, commandlets. Uh, what is commandlets? Are the, the foundation of the PowerShell? Okay, are the native com PowerShell commands? Uh, they are uh, written and compiled in compiling .NET. We can build our own. I never done this one. Uh, and use the, the format verb noun, okay? Uh, the action and what we are uh, we are doing, okay? If, uh, for example, ex uh, get process, get the, the action process, what we get, stop service, import CSV, and uh, uh, the other examples. And one important thing, a commandlet differs from a function, okay? Today we're going to write a script and um, we will convert it as a function, but this is not a common let. A common let needs to be a native one. The next concept, the pipeline, okay? The pipeline um, is um, what allows you to output the output the common let um, from the one component and pass to another, okay? Um, we can complete objects and not only strings. And uh, here is an, an example. If we want to get all process ordered by virtual memory size uh, in the descending order, we can set get process pipe sort using property uh, memory si uh, virtual memory size and saying the order is descending. Okay, uh, my scripting uh, development guides. This is how I usually do it and how I encourage people to do, okay? First, uh, I start by writing the help portion, okay? What I, I write there will, keep me, will help me to keep uh, me close to my, uh, my goal. And obviously, I can make uh, some minor adjustments along the way. For example, uh, if I find uh, something, if I remember something or did, uh, I didn't know, don't know, or either because after performing tests, I detect uh, that uh, I need something else. But the, the, first, uh, the first text, uh, if we can say, um, that I write in help is what I'm strict of, okay? Next. We, we must search about the subject, okay? Uh, read from different sources, different people, have different environments with the needs that change, and this will help uh, you to cover the majority of the case. Uh, find the known ca uh, caveats, if any, and uh, think how you will do it. For example, will I use uh, 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 SMEO or uh, T-SQL? Uh, native commandlets or other tools, for example, for a command that I'm, I'm handing uh, right now, uh, move uh, SQL database file, I could use a copy item or start bits transfer commandlets, but we decide to go for Robocopy uh, because it's faster, okay? Then, the, the most fun part, okay, for me at least, and then we need to test it, perform some tests, try to cover the, the, the case, and, um, and I found an interesting error uh, by design, because I don't know that the command let have uh, a particular behavior. Uh, in this case, I'm talking about the join path command let, um, that I can show you in a minute. 
what uh, what the error I get when when is it used? So she. I'm sorry. Just a moment, please. Okay, for example, if we use join path command let, we, uh, we expect to, uh, we can do something like this. Okay, running, running this, running this one will output C uh, two point slash folder, but uh, using the the um, the command let uh, the the command I'm uh, I'm writing the move uh, SQL the database file, I need to to copy uh, files across the network and use uh, the drives inside some servers, and uh, so, um, sometimes we have another letters like uh, N or S, and when I'm running this one. I come across with this error, okay? So the join path is validating if I have some drive with uh, has two point slash uh, name. And this only, uh, I, can, uh, I came across with this problem only after I made some tests on another environment, uh, um, not the development one, okay? This is interesting because we uh, think the join path do something and is a connect, uh, there is a connect item uh, with this uh, um, issue and uh, I upvoted and I encourage you to upvote too um, in order to uh, bring these comments uh, more user friendly. So for this, uh, this kind of um, this kind of instruction, we need to use, for example, the assembly of .NET uh, IO paths and use the method combine to do the, the join between the, the, um, the drive letter and the, the, all the folders you want. Next. We uh, can improve it, okay? After we test it, and uh, when the script is working as expected, we can try to improve it. For example, converting into an advanced function and taking advantage of the common and risk mitigation parameters, among others. This will also help to learn more stuff, even more stuff. Okay, so the demos. We, we will start with uh, this practical example by writi writing the, the repair uh, SQL orphan user. Um, I already have the, the code done because it's much, much easier and less error prone uh, than I'm writing right now. And, and as I said before, we should start by um, document and uh, write some help uh, which uh, uh, will help us uh, and guide us to the, our um, objectives, okay? So here you can see uh, that, I, uh, that I'm right uh, and help, and the help I can show, for example, the help for another, uh, uh, some native comments, okay? We say get help, and we can say, it for example, for example, um, get uh, child item, and this will bring us the help that child item uh, get child item common let have. Uh, the the help is uh, divided by uh, some sections. We have the synopsis section where uh, we must. Uh, um, write um, a small description about the, these comments. Uh, we have the description section where we, we should um, be more exhaustive uh, writing some, some information uh, about the parameters, uh, um, notes, links, if any, and the examples. All I can call the get help and say, for example, I want to see only the examples. 
okay and this one I can see there is uh, there are uh, seven examples okay and uh, which one uh, each of um, each one has their description, their example of code, and telling what this uh, will do. So for our needs today, we will find orphan users with existing login and uh, and remap the, the, uh, the user to the that login. Um, for anyone that uh, not, might not be familiar with uh, this concept, when um, a user, a database user, don't have uh, any um, link to uh, a SQL login or um, uh, um, SQL Server login, uh, so the user uh, is orphan. Okay, this uh, mostly of the times. For example, we refresh our database with another environment, and uh, um, every time we uh, restore the database, the seeds uh, uh, grid that is um, uh, um, that is on the um, the user is not the same because we backup the database from one environment, uh, another instance, and we are. Uh, bring the database to another instance where the same login uh, can exist, but uh, their seed will be different. So we need to remap this user in order to um, make they they can uh, work again. When um, when we find for orphan users, um, we what, what we know we know the orphan user don't have any matching login. So for example, I have here. Um, a database with uh, two test orphan users, and if I um, I open the user and go to the general uh, section, I see that SQL user uh, uh, is a user type the SQL user without login, because because the login does not exist on the instance. Okay, if I'm go here, I don't have the the login. Okay, so if I create the login again, now. I have here the two logins, but my user, database users uh, will continue without login. And this happens because I not remap my users. So imagine you have a thousand users uh, on a database and you do this refresh every weekend uh, and you need to remap these users. This PowerShell script will, will, do, uh, will uh, cover this scenario, okay? so. The, the thing is, okay, so orphan users is a thing, and but how I can uh, know that is an orphan user? We can see, uh, I show you uh, using uh, SSMS, um, and I will show you how you, we can do using the PowerShell. So the, the rules will be, the, if the matching login exists, it must be enabled, not a system object, not local, and have the same name that user, okay? Um, so we will accept uh, some parameters as SQL Server. Um, the users, because we can, uh, we want, we just want to, to remap one user or two, and not all of them. Um, and here is missing also a parameter called database. So we can choose which database we want to to use or if the 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 parameter is not passed uh, we we will go through all database on the uh, sql server instance okay then uh, we have uh, our notes here where uh, i wrote uh, i'm the original author of the scripts the 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 license um, things then if you have any link with uh, um, some information about uh, orphan users or about uh, 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 another help or a video, something you want, you can put here. And finally, we have here our example sec sections where uh, we have the example uh, using the repair SQL orphan user and we uh, pass the SQL server 2005. And here we say uh, that we'll find and repair all orphan users of all database present on this server, okay? This section is important because if um, this uh, more familiar um, executions, uh, it's more easy for people to, to know how to do it. But for example, uh, if I want to do for 
only two databases. Okay, so I have to specify the database parameter and set the name um, the, the name that I that I want. Okay, or if I only want to to remap the orphan user. Okay, I will pass the user parameters with the orphan user um, value. So we'll uh, go and see um, the codes. And um, if anyone have questions, uh, if not too many, we can uh, uh, make a, li a little um, stop and talking about. But if uh, too many, we can uh, uh, push that to our Slack channel after the session, OK? Starting with our variables uh, declaration, OK? I'm uh, declaring here uh, the, the variable as SQL Server is a, co a collection, and here I'm um, I'm set the value with the, um, the name of my instance, SQL 2008. The same for the database, where I use DB1, and the same for the users, where I will not specify any of any value, OK? So I will go through all the users uh, from the, that database. Uh, in, uh, here, we need to uh, load the assembly that will help, uh, will um, allow us to uh, connect to the uh, SMU, okay? A and next, we can start by creating an, an instance of uh, of uh, an object, a server object. The, this one will be our server, okay? Okay, so I, I said, if I don't... Uh, has which database I want to um, to cover, uh, so maybe I need to to find all the databases on the instance. Here uh, um, I'm doing the, the, that verification. If database count equal to zero, I will go through all databases from the server that I have instance here, okay, and find all the objects there are accessible. Uh, is the system objects uh, equal to false and is accessible equal to true? This one, if you don't, you don't say uh, only the is accessible equal to true. If you have an uh, offline database, this will give an error. Okay, that's why we uh, had these uh, kind of uh, filters here. Uh, otherwise, if we specify a, a database, which is our case, uh, we'll we'll get uh, the data, this database. Uh, here, I'm using a different uh, sign uh, just to say this is an alias for where objects, okay? So if you uh, read some scripts on the internet and see uh, th this uh, sign, uh, you must know this is the where object. It's the same thing, okay? We do the same validations, and in order to guarantee that the user uh, uh, introduce uh, um, a valid database, we will uh, validate if our, our database contains or not the, the name we say. Here, this dollar uh, underscore sign means for, for each uh, database coming from this side of the pipeline um, will be, um, will be uh, query here. So if any of the database uh, coming from the server dot database have the name DB1, I specify uh, here, so that will be my database or database if I specify more than one, which I can do like this, okay? And set here DB2, for example, okay? Next, I've, uh, I revalidate if I have uh, found any database. And if yes, uh, I, I start here some, uh, when I declare here one variable with the a clock um, in order to to know how much time we will spend running the script uh, and passed by all the database and and um, and in the end we will know if this take one minute ten seconds or whatever next we need to go for each DB that we have passed in our example we'll use only one and uh, I use the, uh, for each DB. I uh, wrap my codes inside a try catch uh, error handling uh, because if some error occurs, I want to know what what happens, why the why I I receive the error. Okay, and we can start with uh, our codes. And another um, wonderful thing that we have when we are doing something we 
never done before. We need to study. We need to search. Uh, we found, found or we, we find uh, some uh, new features. And uh, for example, since the SQL 2012, we have a new type, a new database type uh, called containment type, or um, called a container database. Okay, the container database uh, is one database uh, which uh, have their logins and their users without the the link with the server with the instance. Okay, so any users inside that database can live there. Um, alone, don't need any any SQL server uh, login um, um, linked to them. So the first uh, the first thing I do is ver verify if my uh, SQL version is greater than than uh, my major version is greater than 10. So 10 uh, stands for uh, SQL 2008 or 2008 R2. Uh, then uh, the major version 11 is where uh, start for 2012. Then if the database I'm, um, I'm testing right now is of the, uh, S type or uh, is the containment type, if, um, if not equal to none or, or, or which means is partial or full containment, uh, we'll write a warning and continue to the next database. Okay, if not, no warning will be written, and we continue our codes. Here, an, an info message um, which uh, gives to the user the, the perception the, the, where we are in the codes. Uh, this way, we can say, "Okay, I'm validate. I will start to validate the users on the database DB1." I do the same the, the same logic here um, that I, I have done before for the database. This time with the users, with the database objects, I access to uh, our collection of users, and uh, I, I, um, I do a, a, a filter, uh, and I, which I will I want to find log in, um, that the user login is empty, okay, and the user. The username is not the DBO, the guest, the sees, or the information schema. You can see these users here, okay? And this is what we want to put aside because uh, our system or another users, not um, uh, our application users. If if um, my 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 variable uh, do, does not have my parameter does not have any any information uh, we will use and get all the usernames okay that um, all the usernames here and if have any we'll check if the the name of the user exists by uh, querying uh, this way okay so now i have my users uh, collection uh, with uh, uh, users, okay, some users, and I I say okay, orph orphan users uh, found, and next what I will do, I will pick the collection, and I will iterate uh, on each of users, uh, in order to find if exists any login on this the, on the instance with the same name, and here. Uh, comes the part we have uh, uh, written before on our help uh, with the rules. Okay, so I will find the, the server logins uh, which are not disable equal, equal false, is system object equal false, locket equal false, and the name of the login uh, must be equal to my user, the one I want to remap. Okay, so this uh, returns a boolean. If the if the, uh, this variable is true, um, I can go to the database and uh, run a query to remap our user. And here, you have to you have to think and, and say, okay, uh, my script will be uh, will support uh, which versions of SQL Server. Uh, for example, on the DBA tools, we support from the SQL 2000 to SQL 2016. Um, and when you try to run the, the, the syntax author user username with login and, uh, and uh, the name of the, the, the user, which is the same of the login, this will um, throw an error in SQL 2000. Uh, 
and then you say, okay, but I never, I never work with SQL 2000, and you, then you need to go to the internet, make a search, and we will find that, that the way before, uh, before 2005 uh, onwards, the way you have to update uh, our offer users to remap is using the SP change user uh, login um, system store procedure, okay? So here, we val validate if our version are greater than uh, 8, which uh, stands for 2000, uh, SQL 2000, we, we can use the, the new syntax and the, the most recent one, uh, alter user. If not, we are connected to um, a version of uh, SQL 2000 and we need to use the SP change uh, users login uh, system store procedure. Once my variable query has the query insights, I can go to, to my server, uh, connect, uh, get the database, which is database DB1, and execute this query, okay? And I, I will output saying the username uh, test orphan user uh, uh, was mapped with their login. If the login does not exist, we uh, throw a warning, uh, which is written in uh, some orange, um, saying, okay, the orphan user does not have any matching login, okay? So if does not have any match login, we, can rem we can't remap uh, the, the login. Uh, and finally, um, this health is about uh, uh, in case we don't have any users, we say no users found on database. And finally, because we are iterating uh, on uh, various um, uh, databases, we need to uh, reset our users' collections in order to the next execution, we, uh, uh, we'll bring the new users of that database. And the end, we uh, close our connection, uh, making the disconnect, and here, our uh, clock variable, um, we get the total time, and we output that total time, so in order to know how much time uh, we, we take to, to bring all this done. So, as a script, and not a function, I make a save, and uh, run these codes by hitting F5, or uh, here in this button, okay? If I run now, repair, they, they say uh, orphan user was found, the user text orphan was, uh, were mapped to their login and also test uh, to were mapped. We take less than 50 milliseconds to do it, okay? Now, I will um, drop the logins, okay, and by dropping the logins on the instance, the logins are here and will disappear here, our users come um, orphan, okay? So when I run again the, the script, now what I see is the warning message saying, okay, we found, uh, it's true, we found uh, some orphan user, uh, named uh, test orphan one and test orphan two, but does not ex have any matching login, so we can remap uh, the user to any login in the system because we can't find. Um, and uh, when we, we saw that, we can say, oh, right, I have done the, the, um, the refresh from uh, uh, production to development environments, and I need to um, create these logins, okay? So I, ca I can go and create, again, the logins, and if we can see here, the logins are here, but at this, at this point, the users still be orphan, okay? So if we run again our scripts, our uh, users are mapped again with their login. User can log in, can use database without any problem, okay? And this was the example for um, repair SQL orphan users. I will show you uh, right away the, the, the example the, with the function, okay, with function. Here, what, what changed here? We create, we had this, this line, the function and the name of the function we want. Then here, 
we can and we close the, the function at the end and uh, on the um, on the beginning of the function we uh, uh, put our uh, parameters our variables on the script now parameters inside the the param um, section okay we can here say that the the SQL server uh, parameter is mandatory and accept values from the pipeline so you can for example get the get the the SQL server names from uh, a text file and pass it to the um, to to this um, command let okay so with with this okay with this script um, saved i can i can go here and import and test this and test these uh, these scripts. Import module is a native uh, commandlet which allows you to uh, uh, bring into uh, into your profile these uh, scripts. So if I come here and I write something like repair or repair orphan users I can't I, I'm trying to open the intelligence uh, help and I don't have any any comments with this name okay but if I go here and import the module okay now the the, the command is here okay so for this session I can use the PowerShell, uh, the repair uh, SQL orphan users. I can uh, view my uh, parameters. I can say here I want to to connect to SQL uh, 2008, and I can use the I can say I want to use the DB1, okay, and run, and then no orphan users found on database because we remap uh, them early, okay. So this shows how you can. Uh, Put your scripts uh, into an, an function, and how to import uh, your function uh, to, to become a module uh, available on your session. Okay. Back to the slides. The another example, uh, really quick. Another example I have um, is regarding the file system permissions. Um, one day at York, I, I have the the job to uh, move. Uh, a database with about uh, 98 uh, data files um, from uh, uh, one folder to another in the same uh, in the same server, but the folders uh, are in other rooms in other objects. Uh, so, what happened when um, when the I I detach a database? I don't know why, but our um, our files become with the lock, the lock, and uh, the only user that can uh, use the database is my user. This became a problem because I move the files, and then when I try to attach database again, uh, uh, the SQL Server account can't uh, read the files, and uh, I can bring I can't bring the database help. So uh, for for that case. What I have done was okay. This is this is simple because I will go to uh, my folders and I I, I have here an example where I have uh, some one uh, called the data, uh, data zero one. Here I have uh, different uh, um, folders for different databases, and when I come to the the file here I'm using TC, uh, txt only for uh, demo purpose. Uh, I can see. That I don't have, for example, here the everyone account or another account that I want. So I I, I need to come here, uh, say properties, edit, then say heads, then type uh, everyone or what uh, whatever I want to to do, and then click OK and then apply in full control and apply, and then th that file uh, uh, can be moved by the SQL Server account. Uh, remember, I tell you, I have about 98 uh, different files to move. So I, th I, I thought, okay, must have any way to do it uh, with PowerShell. I make a simple search. Don't didn't find any commandlet native commandlet that um, help to to play with the the, the, the um, file permissions in that way. But I found the script from a guy that use the cal uh, calculus um, SHZ, okay, uh, exec. The, this is some native comment that allows to um, 
uh, query the file, uh, view the, the permissions and set permissions. And I have done a, a very simple thing. This script only works for one file and what I have done is head this, this code. This code, I use this native commandlet that will get all the items inside this folder, file permissions, or system permissions, okay? I will do the recursive way because I want to go to all subfolders and I filter by the, the folders that have DB1 name. And uh, I want to find all, the, uh, all the, the objects that are folders, a directory. Doing this, I can iterate for each folder on the, my folder list and if I run only these comments, I select the comment and I can hit um, this F8 uh, key to run only the selected uh, code, okay? When I run this code, I can see that I found uh, three uh, DB1 folders on data 01, 02 and 04 and, and it's a directory, okay? With this, I can iterate each folder and, um, uh, and get the full name, uh, my, uh, my variable saying that I will need, I, I want to apply full, per, uh, full access uh, to my principal that is everyone. Uh, here is a verify because if you see the comment code here, um, we use read host to uh, wait and uh, wait for some input from the user if you want to continue or not. And for each file inside the, the directory we are using, I will uh, see the old permissions, I will set the new permissions and I, I print again the, the, the new permissions in order to say that uh, there was a change. So if I run this, okay, this is what happened. I call here, the script, sorry, I call the script here. I'm using the db1 underscore one tcc file that have these permissions repair that um, everyone is not listed here. Then here I have the, the, I had the new permissions, okay? And the new permissions was everyone, okay? And here and here, okay? So now if I go to my uh, file system structure and I go to the files inside, I can see now the everyone, okay? for this one, for this one, and other other files under the DB1 uh, folders. This is a, another example how, how, uh, how the PowerShell uh, must be seen as a framework and we can use these uh, third part tools, other, um, other uh, uh, programs that help us to, to um, reach our goal. Next, we, I want to um, share with you uh, what we have learned with these examples, okay? So, uh, a summary. Uh, what is and how to identify the orphan users? Uh, we make the script version aware, okay? So, dealing with features from a newer versions. We implemented some rules. We learned that we need to ignore some stuff like the user's DBO, C's, and, and we learned that exists different syntax for older versions, okay? All, uh, all of this with a, symbol, a single subject and um, we uh, came across with this script that will um, help to, to reduce our time post-refresh actions, for example. From the file system permissions, we can use another program to accomplish the task, the task okay? Um, and uh, here I want to say a side note. Okay? If you can do it using Windows GUI, it's almost sure that is a way to do it using PowerShell. Until now, this, this uh, sentence I, I just said, this is true for me, okay? Everything I see uh, done in the, grid, I, in the GUI, I can do uh, by uh, PowerShell, okay? And uh, as always, we could find some work already done on the internet, uh, you must be, be careful with the code, analyze it, test it on the test environment uh, before using on your final environment and, and if you feel confident, adapt to your needs and use it like we did here. I had the for each loop uh, in order to uh, go to all folders. 
this uh, and for example these tests will take so long to do manually that I spent less time by search an example on the internet and adapt to my requirements than uh, do it manually okay an extra slide about the 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 knowledge we we receive when doing uh, comments and we uh, are writing scripts on PowerShell, uh, I will bring with the the um, the comment I, I talked clearly the earlier the move SQL database file. So here um, we um, what I have learned. Okay, so get content, return the collection, and get content. Um, uh, we usually to see get content and a, a, a text file, a log file. And we th I think I talked before that the get content will return a, the string, the full file. But uh, they're not. Uh, uh, he returns the. Uh, a collection and uh, where which uh, which item of the collection is one line of the text uh, we are reading okay uh, another one um, the start bits transfer commandlet does not work with uh, uh, remote sessions remote power cell uh, shell uh, sections but will uh, work on the version 5.1 the join path uh, as I um, I shown before um, the, uh, doesn't work and we must use the system high paths and the combined methods okay uh, if we are using other customs comments um, you must be aware the, the the way the output is formatted uh, for example uh, we have some comments that uh, bring uh, brings um, the the free space available uh, on a drive um, and the free space is about uh, 1000 but the the output will be uh, for example one point uh, three zeros okay and this is different for uh, 1000 uh, comma zero zero uh, because if I want to assign this value to a, a, a int or a long uh, uh, variable type, um, the 1.00 could fail. Okay, Robocopy. I learned uh, almost all the the parameters that Robocopy uh, uh, um, uh, allows, and how to make a copy faster, and um, and uh, keep all the permissions, all the folders, all the and all the files. Uh, create a file hash. Uh, when we copy the file, we create we can create a hash for each on the file uh, one of the files, the source and destination, and compare in order to uh, guarantee that the copy was successfully done. Okay, and PS session, the the remote PowerShell session, where we can run codes uh, on the machines, but uh, we are calling from the our source machine. Okay, so final thoughts because. I'm almost uh, run off, out of the time. I want to share with you, if uh, you like what you have saw, please uh, uh, try to do some scripts, try to, to apply to your daily work. And at, the, at first, you'll uh, spend more time uh, that you want, but will be one way to um, to become more confident and uh, uh, apply the, the the logic and all the um, all the scripts for your work. So, next, uh, using our functions, uh, and I suggest you to use dynamic params, for example. This allows, and we use this on our uh, database tools and uh, um, DBA tools and DBA reports. Um, this is an autocomplete uh, parameter. So, if, uh, for example, I can show you a real quick example. If okay, if I come here and say, um, for example, copy SQL job source SQL 2008. If I hit here and say that uh, say jobs. Okay, this is uh, IntelliSense. Okay, uh, uh, the the list uh, that appears uh, is only the jobs inside that um, that source uh, server. Okay, this allows uh, to uh, um, to do not uh, type wrong the job name 
but okay, if you type wrong, uh, wrong uh, they will say the job does not exist. But this helps to find what uh, we want to copy across the, the servers, okay? Next, the advanced, um, advanced functions. Okay, so to take advantage of the common parameters like verbose and error action uh, and the risk, risk mitigation parameters which is a must on every script. Uh, if you type what if, and I will use the, the, the exact same example here, the, the copy objects, the copy SQL jobs. If I say here what if, okay, this actually does not perform the, sorry, I missed the destination server. I think this one exists. Let me check here. No, I took that, I took that server down. Okay, no problem. But we have here Okay, we have the 2005 uh, server. So here, uh, saying what if, um, repair, uh, here they, they are saying that the, the, the login asset does not exist on destination server, some uh, tests we are making, and um, if, if the, the, the user exists, the login exists, the message will be uh, the job, uh, if the job already exists, will say the job already exists. If you want to, to overwrite, uh, please use the, um, the parameter force, uh, which will uh, drop and recreate the job. Um, but if not, using what if, uh, we will say um, performing a copy of, of uh, CSPOL, We'll see per history job from here to here, okay? Next, our, the, the open source projects that I, I, I talked before, I have talked before, uh, what I can say, um, try to, to join these open source projects. Um, you, you, you have the skills on the tools you use every day um, and uh, why not share your knowledge with a lot of uh, people and be an added value to the community and improve yourself because we, we, you will change, challenge you uh, by doing new things. Okay, um, even if you are not uh, feeling comfortable with coding, okay, try starting by helping to do uh, tests to the comments. Uh, we have examples like this uh, on the DBA tools. Uh, Daniel X Alexander has a little real world experience with PowerShell, but was in to, to learn. You want to learn PowerShell, and he starts to uh, to help us with uh, uh, with tests, and in no time, he you or I will be will start to making some suggestions so again confidence confidence and want to do more okay and this will help uh, your skills um, and help to you to improve um, the, the 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 quick the time you spent uh, doing some scripts to help on your on your um, projects okay on your scripts I'll let you down here some resource uh, besides the Slack community, uh, there are also websites, blogs, Twitter accounts uh, that you can follow uh, uh, to be aware of the news. Uh, and sometimes we're just reading something that helps our needs. Uh, for example, uh, the, the start bit structure uh, that I told before uh, for the remote session. Um, I, I take um, the knowledge about it uh, on the Twitter. Okay, I saw one one uh, tweet uh, with a website uh, and uh, the blog uh, talk about it. Um, and well, I one final resource uh, that have the source down here um, from the Rambling Cookie Monster. Uh, this is one the guy I follow on Twitter uh, because their uh, PowerShell skills. And for uh, anyone that never uh, do some PowerShell, uh, these are the um, 
the beginning and the, the comments you should know and the syntax for the, the variables, arrays and uh, strings, how to comment, how to, to, um, to split strings and so on, okay? Well, starting here, then the next will be more easily to, to learn, okay? Uh, you can pick this, this power, PowerShell uh, sheets and um, and try to to throw some stuff in the the PowerShell IAC. Okay. Well, I hope you have enjoyed the, the session, and I'm here to answer some questions. Uh, you can go to our PowerShell uh, VC on the Slack here uh, to the PowerShell VC uh, Q&A channel, and I will be around. And if not today, later, you can always uh, talk to me um, regarding any question you have. I will try to, to reach all of you. Thank awesome. you. Thank you attending. so much, Claudio. Yep. Yeah, thank you, Claudio. Thank you. So, for, uh, folks, we've got uh, some whole questions here. Uh, if you don't mind taking a moment to answer them, we'd greatly appreciate it. Just trying to get sure. to know our audience a little bit better. And sure. uh, we're going to get the recording posted out to the YouTube channel just as soon as we can. Cool. Excellent. One last question for you guys before you go. Let me see if I'm allowed to do that one. Oh, no, it wouldn't let me relaunch that one. Sorry, I accidentally launched that one uh, earlier. And I'll just uh, show you guys the results of this one. thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, I thought that was interesting that as was well. Cool. Yes. It was with a large portion of the audience having replied. So, all right. Well, again, uh, thanks so much, Claudio, for taking your time to show us all this. Very much appreciated.